but I think that doesn't really mean anything. I think that you guys can see me. I don't think it's blinking on your end either. So welcome to, welcome again, welcome to my Facebook live event. Um, this again is Sarah R. Turnquist. And I am a multi-published, clean historical romance author. And I'm coming to you from Middle Tennessee, where it is just gorgeous outside. Um, absolutely gorgeous. We've had some rain and we've had some cool weather, but it's absolutely beautiful today. Um, and we are continuing today in the Convenient Risk series. We are going to be looking at book three, A Less Convenient Path. And we'll be getting to that in just a second. Feel free to ask questions as we go along and please stay tuned to hear more about the giveaway. So without further ado, I will go ahead and show you, if I can do this correctly, a less convenient path. There is the cover. Again, uh, this is Core Graphics who did the cover and she is just phenomenal. Core Graphics, love Core Graphics. Um, so we have the two main characters here on the front. Um, the, the heroine is Mariana Guachi and the hero is Charles or QT as everybody calls him, Reynolds is his last name. The cover also features a tagline. It says, when all hope is lost, can love overcome? Hmm, I love these taglines. Um, I've mentioned in another Facebook event, live event video, that um, authors have to come up with all sorts of verbiage for their books, um, the tagline, the title, um, the back cover copy, um, this thing called a query, which is the kind of a, a, a short synopsis, which the back cover copy is considered a short synopsis of the book um, without giving away everything um, that they send out to agents and publishers to try to um, get some interest in the book. Um, but you also have what is called a complete synopsis um, which gives away all the twists and turns in the end of the book, which you have to condense down to two or three pages, depending on who you're sending it to and what they require. These are all very, very fun. Um, and as much time as it takes to write the manuscript, the novel, um, it takes more time than you would think to write a 10 word or less um, tagline to come up with the actual name of the book, the title, or to write the back cover copy. Those things are intense and it takes quite a bit of time. So we're gonna do what I call the um, bookstore maneuver. For those of you that um, haven't been with us before, when you come into a bookstore, if the cover is interesting, uh, you generally pick it up, you check it out, um, you maybe read the um, tagline. <laughs> For me as an author, who spent a lot of time on that tagline, I really hope that you read it. If that intrigues you and pulls you in, you're gonna flip the book over and read the back cover copy. So I call that the bookstore maneuver. So I'm gonna read you the back cover copy. She is in a hopeless situation. He doesn't have a chance. Mariana Guachi is lost. Her native nation has been ordered to a reservation, but her tribe was attacked en route. She and her young brother are all that remain. Wandering in a wilderness filled with dangerous souls, she doesn't have a prayer of survival until. Cutie, a hand on the Miller Ranch, happens upon them as he is running from his own demons. But will they add to his troubles or will Mariana awake something in him he never expected? Even bring him to believe in himself once more. A less convenient path is a story of two people without peace. Will they find in each other the very things they are missing? Hmm. So, <clears throat> a less convenient path. Um, and uh, this is, and, and again, as you can see in the comments, this is available in paperback, ebook, and audio. And for those of you that are part of the Kindle Unlimited program, you can find it there as well. Um, 
for those of you that were part of my last Facebook Live event, um, you heard me talk about the beginnings of the Convenient Risk series, the um, inspiration behind the book, A Convenient Risk. So you may recall I was um, traipsing respectfully around a cemetery during the daytime, very important, um, while at a writer's conference with my um, best friend and best-selling author, um, Hannah R. Conway, um, coming upon a strange situation with this grouping of headstones that sparked the story that became a convenient risk, proving that inspiration can come from anywhere. Then an, then an inconvenient Christmas followed, picking up a thread from the first book that I wanted to explore a little bit more. So then comes along a less convenient path. And what I wanted to do there was take one of the ranch hands from the first book, and he's in the second book too, and explore his story um, after the events of the first two books, as he dealt with the ramifications of some of the things that happened in those two books, and um, give him a love story as well. Now, so I have the, the basis of the love story. Now I needed the historical context and hopefully that would provide the heroine of the story. Um, now I needed to research that area of the United States, um, the southeastern Arizona area, because that's where the story is set and that was determined of course by the series. Um, I can't set this book, well it, it wouldn't behoove me to set the book somewhere else because I'd have to break away from the other characters, which I didn't want to do. Um, but I found that there, at this time, at this time period, there was a Native American tribe um, that I had not actually heard of. Um, I'm more familiar with the Native American peoples that lived in this region of the United States. Um, but there was a desert Indian tribe, a Native American tribe called the Tohono O'odham, and they were at this time living in Southern Arizona and Northern Mexico. During the late 1800s, right at the placement of the events of this series, um, they were ordered to a reservation further in the, kind of in the middle region, more middle region of Arizona um, in San Xavier. If I'm saying that right. Um, so some of this uh, Tohono O'odham, which I hope I'm saying that right too, some of this nation, Native American nation, headed into Mexico instead of the reservation, and some of them did head toward the reservation. Um, but as you probably know, Native American nations are made up of individual tribes. Um, so uh, each tribe made their own decision about what they were gonna do. And so this is where the historical piece of the heroine story um, comes from, and the, the makings of her plight took shape. Okay, now the excerpt reading after I get some tea. I drink tea a lot on these um, Facebook Lives, but I'm actually a um, coffee enthusiast. Love coffee. I think on here is really the only time I drink tea, hot tea. Really interesting. Okay, excerpt. Now this excerpt is in chapter one, uh, chapter two, right at the beginning of chapter two. I don't know why I feel like I need to tell you guys where it's located, um, but that's where it is. And I feel like I need to tell you that. Okay. Cutie stoked a small fire. They didn't need the warmth, but the rabbit cooking over the flames gave way to rumblings in their bellies. He'd not eaten anything that day, save what he'd had for breakfast that morning and the few rations he'd dispersed between them from his pack earlier that day. The chorus of groans and grumbles from their midsections reminded them what exactly would make this journey difficult. But he had the pistol, though he hadn't had reason to bring extra bullets. How could he tell the young woman with the dark eyes he only had two bullets remaining? and they were best saved for protection from any wild animals that may come upon them. He gazed across the lapping light even then. The flickers on her skin highlighted high cheekbones, thin, longer features, and full lips. 
She was lovely. But he shouldn't be thinking such thoughts. Their survival was of utmost importance, and here he sat gawking at her. That was almost as bad as selling out your friend for 30 pieces of silver. Oh, that he could take it back. Looking to the side, he wished away the thoughts, the memories, but they remained, taunting him. Her gentle voice drew his attention. She spoke soft words to her brother. Did she soothe him, tell him a story, or talk about the strange man attempting to help them? Perhaps he might ask their names. That would be a good bit of information to have. Clearing his throat, he reached forward and turned the animal on the spit. What should I call you? Her eyes shot to his. Call me? His face warmed. Your name, something other than young woman. She gazed into the fire. Did she not remember her name? Or did she not wish him to know? Was there some mystical belief attached to names in her tribe? I am Mariana. Mariana? He tried the name, unfamiliar to his tongue, but it fell smoothly. Cutie, he pointed to himself. You, you are cute, her brows furrowed. Small and pretty? She was suddenly thankful for the dimness around them. Could she see his face color? Running a hand along the brim of his hat, he tried to think of how to respond. Cutie, it's a nickname. Like what people call me instead of my name. Why don't they call you what you are named? He licked his lip. He licked his lips. Because I have the same name as my father. This is not good? No, it's fine, but it can be confusing. Oh. Silence befell them for several moments. Should he speak? Would she? And what is this name no one calls you? He hesitated. What was this resistance to share his given name? Embarrassment? Shyness? She watched him, waiting. Sighing, he picked up a stick and poked at the fire. Charles. Charles, she enunciated each sound. He smiled despite his discomfort. Charles. She tried again. Charles. It sounded more like one syllable, made almost music-like with her accent. He liked it. Was that okay? No, it wasn't. Rising onto his knees, he checked their dinner. A few more minutes. He sat back on his feet. This Nisto, she wrapped an arm around her brother. Nisto. She nodded. Does he speak? Looking at her brother, her features fell. Yes, but no. Cutie's brows furrowed. She ran a hand through Nisto's hair. He has not spoken since. Her words trailed off and she seemed lost to herself for a moment. But he could guess where her mind drifted and where Nisto's went often. That's over now, you are safe. What a strange thing to say, they were far from safe. Still, he could not stop the words. She looked at him, her eyes glazed with moisture. Did she trust him? Or had they come with him because he was the only hope they had? He turned away first. A weight settled in the bottom of his stomach. What a fool he was. There was no way to know what they had been through. And here he dared offer them hollow assurances. But getting them safely to the ranch was the least he could do. And of that, he was determined. All right. So that's kind of the situation at the beginning of the story, as much as you can glean from that. Um, and now we're on to the giveaway. Um, and here's how our giveaway will work. For those of you that have not been on one of the live events, I will ask a question and you can comment on the question. Um, and uh, you can actually comment from now until uh, Facebook stops collecting comments. Um, but as far as the giveaway is concerned, we will only collect comments to be entered into the giveaway for the next 24 hours. So between now and 2.14 p.m. Central Standard Time on Saturday, April the 25th, 2020, we will collect comments and those comments will be entered into the giveaway or the people who made those comments. Comment is not gonna be winning the giveaway, you are. No, the one person, one of you will. <laughs> um, 
So the winner will receive a paperback copy of A Less Convenient Path and a $10 Amazon gift card. So here's the question. Are you ready? Have you ever gone by a nickname? If so, do you care to share? And I will go ahead and share. Um, when I was young, um, my grandfather gave me the nickname Sunshine. He felt like um, I had a bright smile and that's where that came from. And then as I got older, um, my group of friends gave me this nickname Random Girl because I tend to um, come up with random facts that only somewhat relate to the conversation. And so they would say, random girl strikes again. And so um, there was this whole thing that came out of that. And um, that was my superpower. And anyways, I won't get into it. But um, please do comment. And uh, just if you just want to share that you had a nickname at some point or you didn't, but if you want to share um, what your nickname was or tell us a little more about it, feel free. But if, if all you want to say is, yeah, I had a nickname, then that's fine, too. Um, next week on Monday, um, we will be sharing. I Not we. There's nobody here with me. It's I mean, other than my tech person that's um, helping me in the comment section. But as you can see, he is not on the screen with me. So I... <laughs> I will be sharing the next book in the series, about the next book in the series, which is called A Convenient Escape. It's a working title. So A Convenient Escape, um, I don't want to give anything away about it because I don't want to infringe on Monday's live event. Um, but it is not done it is in the raw form in the first draft. Um, it hasn't gone to editing yet. So, but I intend to share some of the, um, I, I intend to share an excerpt all the same. So you'll be able to hear what some of the writing sounds like before it goes to editing. So that will be fun. Um, and I, I intend to share some of my plans for what the other books in the series will be. So I'm kind of nervous about that, but I think it'll be fun. Um, like I said, there will be at least, so there will be the this book that I'm working on right now, A Convenient Escape, and then there will be at least two more books in the series that I have planned. I've planned out at least two more books after this one. So um, you'll hear all about it. So come join me on Monday. And then after that, we have one more event next Thursday um, and that's an extra special surprise as well. It is a book that is uh, almost complete. Um, it's, it's been through editing. It's about ready to go. So um, I'll see you then if I can end this live video.